Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Last time in video three, we completed our tutorial on the Modeler Data Science platform. And this time in video four, we're going to learn about data science. So you might want to ask, why data science? Well, here's some good reasons. Data science is one of the fastest growing fields in the world. There are 6.5 times as many job openings in 2017 as compared to 2012, according to Forbes. And demand is expected to increase. IBM, in May of 2017, IBM projected that yearly demand for data scientists, data developers, and data engineers is going to reach 700,000 job openings by 2020. And Infoworld.com reported that the number one reason why data scientists remains the top job in America, there's a great quote there, is that there's a shortage of talent. Not with you guys though, right? Because you guys are a talented bunch. So what is data science? Well, the short answer is that data science is the systematic analysis of data within a scientific framework. A slightly longer answer is that data science is the adaptive, iterative, and phased approach to the analysis of data. And later we're going to see in detail what we mean by adaptive, what we mean by iterative, and what we mean by phased. Performed within a systematic framework that uncovers optimal models, or models that we hope are optimal anyway, by assessing and accounting for the true costs of prediction errors. And this is a little bit of flavor that we give our program our particular program here at CCSU, we are very careful to assess and account for the true costs of prediction errors because not all prediction errors are created equal. The goal of data science the goal of data science is to uncover actionable and profitable nuggets of information from large databases. In short, discover knowledge from data. The goal of data science is to discover knowledge from data. Data science lets people leverage large amounts of data and computing power to tackle complex questions. All these corporations are constantly collecting data. They've got it hidden away in these vast warehouses. And uh, a lot of times, nobody's using it. So data science lets people leverage all that vast amount of data and look for patterns, because patterns can arise out of these data, which would not have been uncovered otherwise, that is, without data science. And these discoveries that we make through data science can lead to actionable results, such as more profits for a company, and so that they can hire you as a data scientist. So the data science methodology. All right, we follow the data science methodology, or DSM, which helps the analyst keep track of which phase of the analysis he or she is performing. Okay, and figure one illustrates the adaptive and iterative nature of the data science methodology using the following phases. We start right here in the problem understanding phase, move on to the data preparation phase. We're going to go through all of these in this video. Then the EDA phase, then the setup phase, the modeling phase. This is the heart of the whole enterprise. The evaluation phase. And then finally, the deployment phase. And there's all kinds of arrows going back and forth here. The little arrows go back and forth, and the big arrows go round and round. And we'll talk about those arrows later on.
Okay, um, it's important that what you're going to read in DMPA is something called CRISP DM. And the data science methodology uh, replaces CRISP DM, especially for the Intro to Data Science quiz in the course. Make sure you use DSM and not CRISP DM. Okay, so let's explain a bit about the seven phases of the data science methodology. The first phase is the problem understanding phase, and you wouldn't believe how often this phase is just, you know, hand waved, just passed over. People just don't spend a whole lot of time on it. But if you get this phase wrong, you can just forget everything else you're doing in the entire enterprise because it'll all be a big waste of time and money. Okay. So you ask yourself, how many times have you seen this at work? How often have teams worked hard to solve a problem like these guys are doing, only to find out later that they solved the wrong problem? All right, this phase avoids this pitfall. And you do that in a two-step process. First, you clearly enunciate the project objectives, OK? you get together with a team, you'll be with all kinds of different people from different departments, you'll be with management, you'll be with marketing, you'll be with sales, and you know that these people, they have different lingo, they, they speak different languages, all right? So it's so important to get down on paper exactly what they want, exactly what the project objectives are. I can't underline that enough in the real world you got to get these people all on the same page all right so it's it sounds so easy clearly enunciate the project objectives but that that is just so full of pitfalls and then after that miracle then you as a data scientist you have to translate these objectives into the formulation of a data science problem that is a problem that can be solved using data science all right, and you can see how useful data scientists are here. So that's the problem understanding phase. Next, we have the data preparation phase. And the problem is that, you know, Wilbur, the old D DBA that we had for years and years, um, he's been taking care of our database for, what, 30 years? And he finally uh, moved on. Okay, he got headhunted, and he's gone, and he left behind all these acronyms and uh, um, uh, just kind of a mess in the database, and nobody really knows what's going on with the data in that database. This stuff happens all the time, okay? So what you got in these, in these data repositories is often you can't just access the data and start analyzing right away. You got to prepare the data somebody's got to try and come along and understand what Wilbur did for 30 years, okay? So, the, in short, the raw data from data repositories is seldom ready for analysis straight out of the box, okay? Instead, it needs to be cleaned or prepared for analysis. Okay, cleaned and prepared for analysis. Inevitably, you're going to run into data quality problems inevitably okay and it is in this phase data preparation phase that we fix these problems now in the real world this is what 60 percent 65 percent 70 percent of the entire process is data cleaning and preparation that's in the real world in this course not so much because you know, you're literally going to have textbook examples, right? So textbook examples are never really that dirty. Although on purpose, I don't make them perfectly clean either. There is a little bit of data cleaning and preparation. You definitely have to do some data cleaning and preparation, but nothing compared to what you're going to be seeing in the real world. All right, some data quality issues that await the data preparer. Missing data. This is a big, big big issue 
Okay, missing data is a big problem. How to handle missing data. Identifying outliers. Transforming and standardizing the data. Reclassifying categorical variables. And binning numerical variables. We're going to cover all this at the appropriate time. We're going to cover all this. And our textbook, Data Mining and Predictive Analytics, which I'll call DMPA, covers the data preparation phase in Chapter 2, which it calls Data Pre-Processing. OK, the EDA phase, that is Exploratory Data Analysis phase, now that we're over the rainbow and our data is nice and clean, we can begin to explore the data and learn some basic information by exploring the data. Okay, We're not talking here about throwing our complex algorithms at the problem. Not yet. That'll be for down the road. Now's not the time for the complex algorithms. Instead, the emphasis here is on graphical analysis and descriptive statistics. This is lots of fun, this phase, actually, exploratory data analysis phase. More fun for data analysts than the data prep phase, anyway. Anyway, that's my opinion. So we use simple exploratory methods to help us gain some preliminary insights. Okay. You might find that you learn quite a bit just by using these simple methods. Like this box plot of Star Trek ages. This compares all the different Star Trek series and gives bo comparison box plots of their ages. This could be considered EDA, I guess. Who's this outlier down here? Okay, some of the specific things that you might want to do in EDA, you can explore the bivariate relationship between each of your predictors and the target variable. You can explore the multivariate relationships among the variables. Are your variables correlated? If they're highly correlated, you got a problem. You got to deal with it. Okay, there's ways to deal with it, and we'll find out about those later in the course. How are you going to do your binning? Binning is a is a big deal. Binning happens all the time, and in the real world, binning is almost always done wrong. Okay, so we're going to learn how to do it right. Binning based on predictive value to enhance our models. If you're going to do binning, binning, do it right. And then deriving new variables. Okay, interesting new variables, powerful new variables, hopefully, based on combination of your existing variables. All this and more is covered in uh, Chapter 3, EDA, in DMPA. Okay, phase four is the setup phase. And at this point, we're nearly ready to begin modeling the data. Almost, but not quite, okay? Almost ready to begin modeling the data. We just need to take care of a few important chores, such as the following. We got four major chores to do here. First, we've got to do our cross-validation. Cross-validation is how data science proceeds. And what that means is we're going to partition the data set into a training data set and a test data set. And this is necessary to avoid data dredging. People say, oh, you're data mining. That means data dredging. Well, this is how we avoid data dredging is performing cross-validation and making sure that whatever we come up in our training data set is similar to what we come up with in our test data set, and so it can't be data dredging. Next, we need to validate the partition that we made, and this involves statistical hypothesis testing to make sure your partitions are truly random. We'll be doing a little bit of that. And balancing the data, if needed, that means uh, you can resample records with rare target values. And 
I have a complex relationship with this idea of balancing the data. I'm not sure about that. We'll talk more about that later. And finally, the most, not the most important one, but a very important thing to do during the setup phase is to establish your baseline performance. Establish your baseline performance, and this is very often just skipped. So, listen, suppose, suppose I told you that we had a model that could predict correctly whether a credit card transaction was fraudulent or not 99% of the time. My model for predicting fraud is 99% accurate. Cool. Let's deploy it. Uh, no. You shouldn't be impressed by this model because the non-fraudulent tra transaction rate is only 99.932% according to the Alaric fraud report. And this is real world statistic. So the baseline for this fraud fraudulent model, that is um, fraud prediction model, is 99.932%. That is, our model could simply predict every transaction. Every last transaction was non-fraudulent, and this model, which simply said, nope, 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 for every record, would be correct 99.932% of the time, and thereby beat my 99% model. So, let's see what we got in the little box here. Whatever hotshot fraud prediction prediction model that we build is going to have to beat this 99.932% baseline accuracy. So we're going to have to beat that accuracy. That is, um, parenthetically, if we're using accuracy as our measure of uh, goodness of a model, and more about that much later. So DMPA covers the setup phase in Chapter 7, Preparing to Model the Data, and Chapter 6, Multivariate Statistics. And here it is, the heart of the data science methodology, the modeling phase. Fun! So it's in this phase that we get to throw all of our hotshot algorithms at the data. Okay, Apply hotshot algorithms to uncover some seriously profitable relationships lying hidden in the data. All right, neural networks, decision trees, random forests, you name it. The modeling phase is the heart of your data scientific investigation and includes the following. These are just some of the fun things you're going to do during the modeling phase. You'll select the appropriate algorithm. You wouldn't believe it, but out there in the real world, there's people who are using inappropriate algorithms for the data or for the research question, and these inappropriate techniques cost their company big bucks because the results are unstable or unreliable. Next, we have model selection, and this is a big deal as well. You run your decision tree model, your CART model, and it, and it has a certain level of performance. And then you run your neural networks model, and that has a certain level of performance. And then you run your logistic regression model, and that has a certain level of performance. And you got to say which one performs the best, and according to which criteria. And each of the models is like, pick me, pick me, and you say, nope, we got to choose either one model or if you want and get really fancy you can do some sort of combination of models which is the best okay and not only which performs the best but which model is most understandable to our clients and in fact to our clients clients so for example say you you make a neural network model which is just utterly fantastic at predicting who we should give a mortgage to. And so we deploy it and our um, the mortgage company 
says, well, what are the reasons why it's rejecting these applicants? And um, you have to uh, just say, well, you know, our neural network told us. And, you know, the client's clients aren't going to be happy with that answer. Whereas a decision tree model, much more understandable. It gives you decision rules that are very understandable to regular people. And you can do fine tuning to optimize your results. That is, there's all kinds of options on all of these models. Should, should your decision tree be wide or should it be deep? And what should be your cutoff point to maximize profits? All kinds of questions like this. This is just tons of fun, this modeling phase. And because it's tons of fun, most of DP, DMPA is devoted to the various data models that can be implemented. And in this course, we're going to be doing uh, regression, multiple regression, and decision tree models in this course. And phase number six is the evaluation phase. So, okay, are our models any good? That's the evaluation phase. Are our models any good? Okay, this is how we find that out. So, for example, your buddy at work may think he's got a lock on his prediction for the Super Bowl. I got this done. I'm going to I'm going to make ten thousand dollars on this prediction. Um, but is his prediction any good? You know, anybody can make predictions, including your buddy from work. It's how the predictions are evaluated against real data. That's the real test, okay? And that's why when we do our cross-validation, the training data set is used to develop the model, and then the model is evaluated against the test data set, data that the model hasn't seen before, okay? So in the evaluation phase, we assess how our models are doing. Are models, are they any damn good? Excuse me. Are our models any good? Are they making money for the company? Or are we going to have to go back and try something else? That's the evaluation phase. Don't just come up with a model and think, okay, that's it. Nope. you got to evaluate your model. Is it any good? And how good is it? Okay, you got to make darn sure that your models are outperforming the baseline performance measure that we did in the setup phase. That's why we did it in the setup phase. Our models have to outperform the baseline performance measures in the setup phase. In other words, are we beating the monkeys with darts model? And if we're not, we better go back and try again. And another thing, you need to determine whether your models are actually solving the problem at hand. This goes back to the problem understanding phase. You know, sometimes you can lose track of what you're doing and slowly slide into answering a different question that was actually posed in the problem understanding phase. So you got to make sure that what your high performance model is solving is actually the problem that management wants you to solve. Okay, DMPA covers the evaluation phase in Chapter 15, Model Evaluation Techniques. Finally, your models are ready for prime time in the deployment phase. We don't do a whole lot with this phase in this course. Um, in the real world, you would report to management on your best models. Okay, you would work with management and work with sales, marketing, or whoever you got to work with to adapt your models for real world deployment. Now, writing a report of your results might be considered a simple example of de deployment. And in this introductory course, your course projects will be considered sufficient deployment for this introductory data science course.
Okay, a couple more things and we're done with this video. The data science methodology is iterative and adaptive. I said I'd come back to this. And here we are. By adaptive, we mean that sometimes it's necessary to go back to a previous phase and work on that previous phase some more based on some knowledge gained in the current phase. Now that sounds complicated. It's really not. For example, we're out here in the evaluation phase and we find that our highly crafted model actually uh, doesn't beat the baseline accuracy model. Oh gosh. So we got to go back to the modeling phase and develop a model that'll beat the baseline, darn it. That's all that is. It's adaptive. You go back and forth as needed. And the other thing is it's iterative, and by iterative that's this outer ring of uh, arrows like this going round and round and round and round meaning that okay hey we did good we deployed this model we had uh, we had good communication with management and with the other departments and so this model that we created serves as an input to the investigation of a related problem you can say, hey, there's this other problem that we can use something similar to what we just did to solve that other problem. And that's why this is iterative. Okay. Okay, so in this video we learned about the data science methodology. And in the next video we're going to learn about the tasks of data science. So thanks for watching and don't forget to back up your data.